This program is a paid commercial announcement and in no way represents the views of WPHT or its management. Talk Radio 1210 WPHT, WPHT HD, WOGL HD3, Philadelphia. Now, Health Watch, featuring Dr. Molly Fantasia, the PhD doctor and founder of Innovative Medical Associates, with valuable information that could help you improve your quality of life. Now, Health Watch, and your host, John Damasi. Well, since this is a health show, we should inform you that if you're headed out this morning, bundle <laughs> up. It's, it's a bit on the chilly side, but that's okay. It's October, right? We, we got spoiled there with all that, that heat this past week. But good to have you with us as always. Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. As you heard the man say, Dr. Molly Fantasia is here, the PhD doctor, the executive director, and founder of Innovative Medical Associates, Marlton, New Jersey. We're going to talk about Innovative Medical, the who, what, when, where, why, and how of what they do at Innovative Medical and how it can benefit you and your family as far as your overall health picture is concerned. So stick around for a lot of good information here. And as always, our lines are open here in the studio, 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210 at any time during the course of the show. If you have a question or a thought for Dr. Molly Fantasia, that's what you do. Pick up the phone and call us. And as always, Dr. Molly, good to have you with us. Hey, it's good to be here. And Innovative Medical is very, very unique. Oh, it is. In in a lot of ways. (laughs) In a lot of ways, yes. It is. Uh, What what is unique about it? What is is the difference? Well, let's talk about the similarities in that we are a primary care facility. So we can do anything in other primary care facility can do so if you need to go out for an x-ray we can send you for that if you need to go out for uh you know pharmaceuticals we can send you for that but the philosophy is different and some of the modalities that we use are different so one of the things we want to do is a we want to improve quality of life for all our patients and b we want to do that with the least amount of pharmaceutical necessary to medically handle a person's challenge and we want to do it with natural substances that we deliver through the hydration therapy and you do that most likely because there's many side effects to prescription <laughs> too medicine. numerous to right. count but with regards yeah. to the hydration and the yes. natural products are there side effects to those? Well, sure, there can be side effects to that. You know, you know, John, we've been doing this for 26 years, I guess, October, to this, or maybe 25 this yeah. October. See, yeah. I lose count. I was just <laughs> Okay, so 25 years on the 1st of October. And I can tell you that in all the years that we've been doing this, the I can count if there was any. It was very mild. It Maybe it was a little bit of a, a low blood sugar because the patient refused to eat before they came in. And then they didn't eat what I put out, like the snacks that yes. I put out while you're sitting there. But other than that, honestly, I have to say God has been good to us and we have never had any serious issues. Well, I guess you can conclude that the likelihood is less. Exactly. That you're that, going to have that's right. side effects. That's right. And plus, remember, we customize the hydration. This isn't one size fits all. So we're able to really take into consideration all the metrics that a patient presents. That's really a unique kind of thing. So if you present and we know the history and I know what you you know are allergic to and I know all these kinds of things, roll it by the docs, and we're able to really put together the protocol for you. So that, of course, lessens side effects as well. We know that you use a lot of, and you've talked about some of the uh, the, the natural products that you use, and uh, you've mentioned them from time to time here on the show, and I know you're going to talk about them today. Sure. But is there one that is, mo- other than vitamin C, <laughs> is there one that's well, more effective well, than another? You know what's interesting? I think that I'm finding that a course of chelation sends, tends to be a very beneficial process for people, not just for the cardiac issues, but because of all the exposures that we have in life now. So, for example, I just had a patient come in this week, and it had to do with exposure again to mold. And, of course, there are only certain ways to treat mold. And, yes, she took all the anti-mold medications. This was a free consult. Very interesting. She's taking them all. She's still testing very high from the mold spores, which means that 
Now what should be done is a course of chelation, which means to claw out the substance. And there are specific chelators for that in the natural world as well as in the conventional world. And you mentioned chelation, and I know for years you you cut your teeth on that yeah, with yeah, so yeah. many heart patients. Correct. Because back when you started, bypasses were the big thing. Yes, yes. And, and you helped prevent a lot of bypasses. <laughs> bypasses, and then we went to stents, yes. which are the next big thing, and right. they're still a big thing. And what happens is many times people come in because their stents are closing, and that is something that things like chelation can help with. So it's it's not just chelation, but it's a it, variety uh, right, of, 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 of various substances that we use and that I believe we're pretty skilled at after doing it for all this time and that I have an interest in making sure that a patient is treated in a way that is less invasive than the traditional remedy, so to speak. And I ask you this just about every show because people ask you every consultation they say to you, Dr. Molly... I listen to your show, and you, it's wonderful and all that, but is this going to work? Look, <laughs> That's look the question. here's the thing. You know, I, I want to preface that by saying, guess what? You go in and you do your conventional medical treatment. Does it work? Not well, always. Well, not always. No. <laughs> but I can tell you that for the most part, most of my patients leave our facility in better shape than they came in. And they will tell you in terms of quality, in terms of functionality, and many times in terms of their actual quantitative data, that's your blood work, et cetera, and, and radiology, et cetera. So yes, it works. You know, it's interesting talk about traditional medicine. I've probably been on 10 different combinations of blood pressure medicine oh boy. because it, 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 they couldn't get the right thing. Well, you're in a highly pressured job. Buddy. <laughs> and so finally, finally, they just got it right. just recently. Right. But I'm saying that it happens with how many times do they switch medicines? Meds. Of course, I just had it happen again. Let's talk about the lipids. How many times are people put on certain statins, they can't take it. Then they move them to the new injectable drugs that are out there. And, then, and now they have worse side effects than they had with the lipids. Although, you know, we want people not to be at risk. I will never tell someone, get off of your medication. I will tell you that working closely with our physicians, there's a good chance you might be able to reduce the, the medication. Now, I know you have people that come in once a week, twice a week. Yeah, it and depends. And some come in three times a week, depends. What's kind of the norm? I would say the norm is at least once a week uh, with, depending on how the severity of the condition that we are treating. And by treating, I'm saying in order to improve their quality of life. So if someone comes in with an autoimmune disease that they've had their whole life, Obviously, in the beginning, we want to see them a little more often because we have to build up some reserve. Um, if someone comes in and they just need tune-ups, for example, they, they're doing well on their medication, everything is good, they may be having a little bit of a blood sugar problem. Well, then you can come in once a week maybe for the first five treatments, and then after that, maybe every other week. So. so we should also mention that it's delivered via IV. Of course. And the hydration bags have a variety of nutraceuticals and, and other combinations. Correct, correct. But you've often talked about the synergy, which is part of your proprietary protocols. Of course, that of course. That you know the synergy and you know what works with well, what, when, yeah. why, and how. And you really want to, the interesting thing about this is it all goes back to something everybody dreads in biochemistry. It's called the Krebs cycle. And I don't want to get into it because someday I show people this, the chart, and it tells us how our cells operate in every single system, on every single organ in our body for 24-7 till the day we close our eyes. How about that? And that's really interesting because it has to do with what? Energy, energy, the body's energy. So it, it's really your your system. It's not just, oh, I'm going to put a, it's, it's not like you're, you're making, we're not making a, a spa. cake, you know? We're not a spa. <laughs> right. I'm not here saying, oh, listen, come on in because you're drunk yesterday and you want to feel better today. Yeah, I can do that. But that's not where our passion lies. Our passion lies in keeping someone healthy regardless of what they do in their personal life through their, through their trials and tribulations. I think you've, you've often said, it, it's, and we say it here at the beginning of the show, 
It's to improve your quality of right. life. Right. This is a medical modality, and that's it in a nutshell. And I would say that, but again, it's using God's ingredients that have been here for decades, for years, since the, since the, uh, the Garden of Eden. All right, we're coming up on our first break of the morning. Our program is called Health Watch. You'll find us here every Sunday, 8 till 9, here on Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. Dr. Molly Fantasia is here. She is the Ph.D. doctor and the executive director and the founder of Innovative Medical Associates, located in Marlton, New Jersey. You have a question for Dr. Molly, 855-839-1210. And as we tell you every week at the beginning of the show, and it happened again last week. We had three calls at the end of the show. <laughs> so we had, a, we had a rush through it. So call early, 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210 with Dr. Molly Fantasia. I'm your host, John DeMassey. We return. More Health Watch after these words. Back here on Health Watch, and as always, operators standing by at Innovative Medical Associates while we are here on the radio, and they're there after we leave you on the radio. It's pretty simple. You can call them anytime, 856-489-0505, 856-489-0505. If you're a little bashful about coming on the radio and you want to talk to the operators, you want to get some information about Innovative Medical, you want to set up an appointment with Dr. Molly, that's what you do. The initial consultation is complimentary, and you can find out a lot during that. Believe me, it's, it's very informative. 856-489-0505. And the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. A lot of good information on there as well. InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com is the website. And our show is Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. Dr. Molly, I know you uh, always like to talk about a patient, or, pa- two. patient sure. or two here or there. And it kind of points out some of the problems that, that you face and what the patients have. And we're going to talk about Susan and what was her challenge. Well, Susan came to me and she wasn't sure what was wrong. But in the history, we discovered that she did have COVID and she had a pretty bad, severe case of COVID. What's interesting about Susan is immediately when she came in, I sent her immediately to see my medical director. And um, he was at his other office, but he got her in and saw her, and she came back to me. She did go to the hospital, reviewed all her hospitalization reviews, and we realized what she's suffering from is a myriad of challenges post-COVID. Now, I'm very interested in these challenges post-COVID. I'm going to talk about another one a little later. But in Susan's case, it really has a lot to do with her breathing and taking in deep breaths. The good thing is she's highly intelligent. She comes from a highly intelligent family. Her brother is a pharmacist, retired, who's intelligent. And he told her to pick up a spirometer, which is, do you know, remember if you've ever had surgery, folks, and you can't had general anesthesia, when you come back, they give you a little column that has balls in it, and And you you breathe in it, it has a long tube, you know, and you breathe into it, and you've got to do so much of that repetition. And the ball has to bounce. Oh, yeah, and and it has to go up to the top, right? (laughs) I remember that. (laughs) Right, because it's trying to expand what? Your lung capacity. It's trying to get the lungs back in shape. And in there. Susan's case, it's been taking a bit of time. And she had these little things next to her when she came in this week. And I said, whoa, that's pretty cool. And she said, this is the only one I could get. My brother told me to get this. And it's the only one I could get because they're all sold out over what? COVID. Yeah. So the thing about it is so fascinating because there are so many things you can do for your lungs. But this is very, very good. And the reason why I mention it is when I talked to her uh, this past week, I realized that the lung issues were still, the fatigue was going away, which I had concentrated on in the beginning, but the lung issues were still causing her some trouble. So I switched up her protocol. I'm anxiously awaiting her to come in this week because I actually put something in there for the lung situation to make it a little easier and hopefully we're seeing the results on the spirometer but one of the reasons why i'm able to really 
put this particular protocol together is because I have seen several autoimmune diseases that also affect the lungs. We've treated a patient who had asbestosis. We treated a patient who had uh, sojourn syndrome, some other types of, of syndrome, including sarcoidosis which are all lung-related issues. So I have a protocol for that, and it tended to work pretty well with the autoimmune people. I discussed it along with Dr. Mark, and he said, let's go for it, Molly, because Susan is a good example of someone who takes good care of herself in every other area and just got knocked got knocked down with this COVID. No, there's no lung damage for Susan, is there? Well, yeah, there's ground glass. It's called the ground glass situation. And what it means is that there's some scarring there. I don't know if it's permanent scarring, but what I'm saying is there is a shadow that shows up on the radiology, and it is from the COVID. And it is something that's out there for a lot of people. They call it, in fact, another one who has it is my own assistant, Joanne. Joanne has the exact same thing, and it was worse for her, too, because she had an additional autoimmune disease on top of the COVID. So what I'm saying to people is that just because you're through COVID doesn't mean you're going to go back to 110%, not without a little help. And I think that's where we come in. You call this your post-COVID hydration protocol. Yes. I, I know you, you that that. So now is this something that they're going to have to be in for? Quite well, some time. I think they're going to have COVID to. Well, so I think they're going to have to be in for maybe ten weeks okay. in order to get it done where I want it to be. But again, that's going to depend if they've already had. Let's say someone who has some of the autoimmune diseases that I just spoke about, and they had lung involvement with that, and on top of which they have COVID. I will tell you something very interesting. A good friend of mine who is an infectious disease doc told me, you know, Molly, this is pretty interesting because I treated two of your patients who had COVID, who had a comorbidity, and my goodness, they did better, quicker than other people. Because why? We were already treating the lungs in our autoimmune disease protocol. So you were uh, boosting them, to say the word, you were boosting them before this happened. Right, because there's multifaceted to a lot of these autoimmune diseases. And so what we want to do is improve the functionality, including how, how much, how deep of breaths they can take. You know, breathing affects everything, right? Because you're trying to get the oxygen in from head to toe. So for example, when you have a problem with your breathing, you have a problem with fatigue. Right? Absolutely. Have you ever seen anybody with emphysema? They can't even walk a, a, the, the, you know, oh, a yard, right? I, I had a friend who had COPD. Right, I've treated that. He used that. to walk up the, the steps in my office, and he had to sit down when he got to the top of the steps. The most beautiful thing in the world is, with Dr. Mark's help, we've treated many, many people who've had these kinds of things. And once, and what's interesting, you come in with the diagnosis, so then how do I improve your functionality? You know, there's sometimes there's no cure for some of these diseases, right? Or these conditions, if you want to call them, but you can improve their quality of life. And that's the treatment. So I'm talking about improving your quality of life. And you've often said that. Let's say someone has had COVID and yes. you mentioned comorbidities. And I know that's why you've been very careful with me because I have multiple comorbidities. Right. So if, if they have... If they've had COVID, yes, and they're should should they come in? Sure, and, and get let's the talk preventative about, maintenance. Right, they should talk to us and see what we can in, improve. In other words, I know you're going to be fatigued. I know you may be headachey. I know you might feel a little bit, but but there are so many things that we're finding out that COVID affects, including your hormonal levels, etc. And another thing, John, that I just read. This is a brand new study and everybody should take listen to this you can go on pub pub med and read the study it covid affects the pancreas covid may affect your pancreas what does that do that has something to do with diabetes i was just going to say that so yeah and you know this is interesting because i've been following our covid patients who've had 
uh, who are diabetic, and sometimes I would see a spike in the blood sugar, and I'm thinking to myself, why is that happening? They're doing everything we did. They're doing what we ask. One of the reasons is it affects the beta cells in the pancreatic, in the pancreas. So here you, you go. You we got, don't even know. That's right. the point. The point is we don't know what this COVID is doing, and it's coming out little little dribs and drabs at a time so in the end what's the most important thing you can do maintain your immune system right so that we don't have to do this but if you're unfortunate enough to have had it and you don't think you're not putting together some of your symptomatology please call and let's see if we can put this together and possibly put you on the road to good health yeah i was just thinking of that because if you have comorbidities and you've had covid like your assistant joanne right you, you know then (laughs) <laughs> you need some help. Right. And I want people who have diabetes who are having trouble maybe maintaining their sugars now to think about what I'm saying. And can I help the pancreas and liver? You bet. You bet. We have a tremendous protocol for that. And in doing so, you'll be you'll be shocked at how much better you're going to feel. All right. We are coming up on what we like to call halftime here on the show. It's our halfway point of the program. And it is Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. Our number here in the studio, you have a medical challenge, you have a question, you have a thought that you want to run by Dr. Molly, this is the time to do it, 855-839-1210, 855-839-1210. That's our number here in the studio. Again, our show is Health Watch, Sundays 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT. With Dr. Molly Fantasia, I'm John DeMassey. We're coming back. More of today's Health Watch after these words. Welcome back to Health Watch. Operators are standing by at Innovative Medical Associates. If you have some questions, you want more information, you want to discuss that with them, you certainly can do that. 856-489-0505. Or if you want to move forward and set up an initial consultation with Dr. Molly, which is complimentary, all you have to do is call and set it up and she'll be happy Dr. Molly will be happy to meet with you, and she does uh, often during the week as a result of people listening to this radio show. 856-489-0505, 856-489-0505, and the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com is the website. And our show is called Health Watch, and you'll find us here, the live version, every Sunday, 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Again, our number here in the studio. You have a question for Dr. Molly, 855-839-1210. I got a facial the other day. Oh, good. From your esthetician, yeah, Ellie. Yeah, she's great. And the, the reason I bring it up is because the products that she used are your products. Right. And right. we've talked about that. Right. Uh but, what, what, let's, uh, tell me about nutrition and hydration sure. and skin. And well, I know... First, you, you I know, talk. I know. First, let's let's let me quote my illustrious, lovely Linda. She says it's better to look good than feel good. Now, <laughs> I like to say a little bit differently. I say, why can't we look good as well as feel good? Right. And she said, oh, OK, but that's my lovely Linda. And she does look good. Here's the thing, folks. Nutrition for the skin. Believe it or not hydration of course we know is very important for skin because you want to be plump and firm etc but I want to let people know that my skin product line that I work so hard with with the wonderful Dr. Harvey Glass who by the way was a dermatologist for over 30 years so if there's anybody who knows skincare it's him (laughs) one of the things we were really looking at is When he saw all of the nutraceuticals that I'm using in the hydration and using them for true medical challenges to improve quality of life, he said, hey, Molly, do you have any idea of how well we could use those nutraceuticals in topically? And I said, well, you know, Harvey, I never really thought about that because I always thought that was spa-like. And, you know, he said to me, oh, no. I'm talking about medical application, dermatologic application of skincare products. And so that's how we develop these. And one of the things I want to say is everybody knows. So we can make your skin look good from inside out by using the hydration. And then by applying the... um, the new the nutraceuticals topically through the skincare creams etc 
were able to enhance the skin. So one of the things I want to talk about is vitamin C, right? And if you go into the drugstore today and you go to the cosmetic line, you see a million different types of vitamin C. When I say that, vitamin C is vitamin C. You've heard me say that before, right? Yes. But I'm saying it's the extracts that count. Well, one of the things that we look for in using this for certain uh, skin applications is to extract vitamin C from pineapple. Who Did you ever think of that? I never thought of that. No, no, because it's really super good for skin damage, sun damage, and free radical damage that the skin does for just years of wear and tear. So again, we're looking at the application of vitamin C and the extract of vitamin C, which you know I'm very particular about in the bag. Yes. So now I'm also particular about in the skincare. Another particular nutraceutical that I love is grapeseed extract. I use that extensively in the hydration bag and I love it in the use of skincare. So you won't always see these in the kind of things you find at these uh, cosmetic stores. You don't always see them. And even in good brands, I mean, it's really interesting. They don't go the extra mile to say, hey, we can use some of God's ingredients in here and we may be able to do the same thing and actually accomplish it a little better without any skin irritation or anything. That's the key, right? Yeah. Uh, interesting because you mentioned skincare products. I don't have to tell you, and, and Dr. Glass knows the same thing. There's a million That's skincare right. products out there. Right. But I want to understand what differentiates yours from, you know, the, see the, the, famous, natural the famous actresses come on and say, I use this all the time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're being paid to say that. I know. That they today. go to the French doc and this right. and that. Well, let me tell you, I agree that there are natural products, natural extracts from God's ingredients and they're used in the skincare product and the skincare line that we put out. So for example, again, the grapeseed extract, what that does is is full of vitamin E, okay? And vitamin E does what? It helps promote collagen. Now, let me tell you something about collagen supplements. There's a million of them out there. Do you know that I deliver collagen IV? No, I didn't know that. No, I know. I know it now. (laughs) That's right. And I've used it for all kinds of things, like with collagen disorders. So in addition, if we want to say we have a beauty line, I guess that's it. But what people have to understand is where we get these extracts are just as important on the topical as it is in the IV bag. That's my whole point of this. I have to also tell you that I got my facial the other day. And the esthetician said, oh, this is Dr. Molly's product. The final thing that she used, it was a spray, and it was it smelled like roses. Yes, it was. it's extracted from rose oil. It's a fixative. So what happened is she's trying to, she put all the natural products on your face, and what she was trying to do is fix that for you so that it has time to be soaked in and do the job. You look good, John. You look yeah. 20 years younger. Yeah, there you I want, go. But here's the thing. I want to say that you look 20 years younger from the inside out, okay, and in I, addition. I was going to ask you that because okay. you have often said the skin care helps inside and out. Right. Can you right. explain? The, well, I'm using the same products. Now, you're obviously not going to get the kind of punch Okay, from let's say my VAR vitamin C cream that I can give you in the bag. And remember, I'm going to use various extracts of vitamin C to accomplish what I want to do in the bag. When I have a cancer patient, I'm not going to use pineapple. I'm going to use a tapioca, less sugar. So there are so many, I mean, you have to think about all this in terms of the biochemistry. And that's all I do. I live, eat, and breathe this and say, how do we do this? And how do we help people? Another thing. Believe it or not, mushrooms. Mushrooms have a place in my uh, facility as well. Medicinal mushrooms, not not uh, LSD and whatever, but medicinal <laughs> mushrooms. And interestingly enough, people don't realize that colic acid is actually derived from mushroom, but it can also be made synthetically. Well, believe it or not, the mushroom extract is probably better than the colic acid that you get on the counter sometimes that is man-made. So, I mean, these are the things I want people to realize that God's given us a plethora of, of product that we can use not only um, 
let's say, not only through IV, but even that we can ingest as well as topically apply. I understand you're working on a shaving cream and, yeah, yes. uh, and a sunblock, too? Yeah, well, the sunblock's out, oh, it's actually. Out. Okay. Actually, I, I believe someone ordered a bunch of them this, this past week. I don't quite know if they're on the web yet. I sent them out for the photographer, but I do know people heard our radio show a couple of weeks ago and actually called for them. So you, you have a variety of, yes. of products now. That's and, right. Uh, I'm waiting for the shaving cream. Cause well, I'm nah, use that. <laughs> I agree, but, but, you know, there's another thing avocado might be something we're going to use in the shaving cream wouldn't that be nice because it's loaded with c e k1 and b6 and so it's a natural source of this so the question is you know are there things that we can use yes one of the things i'm doing this for too there was a real leap i took in doing this because during covid many of my patients came in with sensitive skin on their hands why they were washing and sanitizing. And of course, I've seen this in nursing and in our, our care as well. But now I was seeing it on the patients. And I thought, wow. So they're experiencing the dryness of this. And I was talking to Dr. Glass about this. And he said, hey, Molly, that's exactly why you need to be in this. And so that's one of the reasons why I went in. I really want to help people through these kinds of things maintain their collagen, maintain their skin suppleness, etc. Because the skin's the largest organ. Why wouldn't I want that to be in good shape Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. So it, it sounds like the skincare line, and you're you're adding to it. It, it sounds like it's an extension of what you do. That's exactly every day. right. That's exactly right. And that's the way I want to use it. I do not. I'm not really a medical spa. We are a true medical facility. It just so happens you can't ignore the largest organ in the body. That's all. And that's and that's, that's really you, where we're at. That's why you yes. did this. Yes. So it's a good idea, I guess. You know, and I, I've got some of your products, and I'm, like I said, I'm waiting for the shaving cream, but. It's probably a good idea to supplement your what you're doing with your hydration with some of the skincare Yes, and products. that's exactly, and you know, fundamentally, that's all I was using it for. But it just seemed like it was a good, it's good products, and it seems to be catching on and people want them. So we made them available to people who are not our patients. But fundamentally, it was an adjunct to their hydration therapy. I want to ask you, you, you mentioned before the show, you were talking to me about passion fruit and oh, ginseng yeah. yeah what do they have to do with with all well, of this uh, well i'll tell you that <laughs> ginseng is a, is a natural skin brightener and passion fruit is loaded up with polyphenols which help right sun damage and oxidative stress and you hear me talk about oxidative stress in terms of the IV or the hydration protocols because that is bad for the body anytime the body's under oxidative stress that's a no-no you know uh, talking about the facial again uh, your esthetician was saying to me and you don't realize this she said oh you have a little I'm going to get you something you have a little something here mm -hmm. you have a little something there you don't realize what what you might have and you don't realize how much potential damage you could have from the sun or from whatever? Oh, well, the sun, definitely. Right. That's why I said, I mentioned that you should be using sunscreen. I don't care if you don't want to use mine. Please use sunscreen yes. every day. Yes. In particular, our cancer patients need to do this. Uh, use sunscreen every day. You know, vitamin D is great. Okay, and I, I suggest you take it orally because the sun, too much sun. You know, this is Goldilocks again, John. Yeah. What do I always say? Too much of one thing is not good. That's right. Just right. That's right. We are coming up on our final break of the morning, uh, which means you still have time to jump in here with a question, and we're going to talk to Lana after the break. Oh. Lana's in Cape May. We'll talk good. to her. It's Health Watch Sundays, 8 till 9, Talk Radio 1210, WPHT 855 Eight three nine twelve ten is our number here. Eight five five eight three nine twelve ten with Dr. Molly Fantasia. I'm your host, John DeMassey. We return more of today's Health Watch after these words. Back here on Health Watch, operator standing by right now at Innovative Medical. And as we always tell you, when we leave at nine o'clock, <laughs> they don't go home. Okay, they're there. So you can call them after nine if you like. Eight five six four eight nine zero five zero five eight five six. 489 0505. 
you want to set up an appointment to sit down with Dr. Molly, that's really where you can get a lot of your information and kind of then make a decision as to whether you want to move forward. You, you want to set that up. It's really an important thing that you can do. 856-489-0505. That's the number. And the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com. InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com is the website. And before we get back to the show, we do want to remind you, if you miss any of it today or you like what you hear, you want to hear it again, we have our Health Watch replay Sundays 4 until 5 right here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Let's go to the phones. Lana's in Cape May. Lana, good morning. Welcome hey, to Health Watch. Hey, it's Lana RN. How are you, Lana? <laughs> good morning, Dr. Molly and John. Good morning. Hey, and good morning. Hey, hey, Dr. Girl. Molly, you, you know, it's funny. When I come into your facility, I say, hi, everybody, I'm home, and that's how I feel when I'm there. Oh, man, it's you're family. too good. You're too good no, to me, you know. No, and by the way, I want to see you now. You know, to, to, I mean, Wednesday, you better come in. We got a, we got a good thing going on. Okay? Love all you. Right. <laughs> all right. Ahead. And I love all of you, too. There isn't anything that I haven't come there with that you or your staff hasn't been able to help myself or hubby or Lucky. <laughs> oh, I love Lucky. <laughs> and little Lucky comes in and uh, greets all the people who want to be greeted. Well, anyway, uh, Dr. Molly, um. But one of the things I wanted to ask you about is uh, you talked about things being multi-generational. And I remember oh, yeah. my mother suffering with yeast, candida. Yes. And I, mm. I do. And I, when I talk to other people, it seems to be like I get it in my nares and, and oh, my places goodness, I yeah. shouldn't talk about on the radio. Right, right, right. And, right. and uh, right. I, I wonder if you could speak to that, please. Oh, sure. I, I'll happily. Yes, we have a protocol for, for Candida. It is an IV protocol. I can't tell you exactly everything in it on the air, but I can tell you it's pretty unique because it does tend to help this now you know you are talking about systemic candida we're not just talking about localized candida that a lot of people understand as women's problems you know but they're really really mm -hmm. candida affects both men and women and not just in the genitalia you really have to look at systemic from head to toe and that's why I believe a um, hydration uh, vehicle is the best way to treat it Interestingly enough, there's also some data to say that things like um, vitamin C can help along with uh, the particular substance I'm thinking about. Now, I would not throw away, you know, by the way, medication that we use for candida is pretty rough on you, right? The oral medication yeah. is rough. The and liver, so, yeah. yeah, it's rough on the liver. Exactly right. Spoken mm -hmm. like a nurse. Mm -hmm. There she is. <laughs> but but I'm saying that if you need it, of course, you know our docs will write it for you. But in addition, we can make the recovery from the candida a lot quicker. The real problem with candida is you've got to get to the spores. Otherwise, yeah, it comes back and it comes back and it comes back. So it's a good mm -hmm. question. When you come in on Wednesday, I'll talk to you about how we treat that in the in our facility, along with the medical treatment, okay? All right? All right, Lana. Okay. Thank you. And don't forget, don't eat so much sugar either, folks, because you're feeding the candida. Okay. Thank you, Lana. And, and, and don't forget to bring Lucky in. Lucky's oh, the yeah. dog, by the He's way. He's the for best. Those, the for therapy those who don't dog. Know, the He's therapy the best. dog, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Lana, Lana. Thank you for the call. Anthony's in Newtown. Oh. Anthony, good morning. Hi, Hi Anthony. You're on Health Watch with Dr. Molly. Hi. Good morning. Dr. Molly, uh, let's see. I, I got two questions. One for me, one for my daughter. Okay. Uh, I was, I was uh, told about a year ago, I went to the doctor. He put a cotton stick up my nose into my brain. <laughs> and I felt like you know, I felt like screaming. Oh That's my god! Painful. But I, you know, former Marine, I don't scream. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you're my kind of guy let me tell you i got a lot of marines in my place you're yeah. a good man <laughs> go ahead well later on that day uh, towards the end he called me the md and he says you have covid19 okay yes, i do yes, you do so okay. i could uh, my daughter said dad you gotta sit stay in your room we'll give <laughs> you all the certain water that certain water you can drink right. and it'll keep you strong which good. he did and I survived it. Thank now, God. Thank God for your daughter. Amen. Every man should have a daughter. 
my wife passed away in 2010. So. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. But anyway, yeah, without a wife, there's no life. Right, uh, right. So anyway, uh, I survived it, and uh, what happened? So, uh, now I, I, I hear certain people say, medical people say, well, you don't need to take the shot. Because mm-hmm. you have that, <laughs> that Antibody, whatever. Antibody, yeah. yeah. Is that true? Well, you do have the antibodies, I'm sure. Now, you know what you should do to put this whole thing to rest. Why don't you get tested for the antibodies and see how high they are and make sure that you're in good enough shape? But, you know, this is an individual, you know, I, this is a hard question for me because my my facility is split on, you know, these boosters. I understand why people are worried about them. And I think that there's some significance to worry. But I also understand the need for some of them if you don't feel that your immune system is where it should be. I have to say, though, it sounds to me that if you got over the COVID pretty quickly, whatever kinds of things your daughter was doing for you. By the way, was she a nurse, sir? Is she a nurse by any chance? No. Is she still- no? Oh, good. Then she's really got it down. She, uh, she obviously tried to maintain your own immune system. So, I mean, I think, again, I'm going to talk speak to the fact that I believe this whole thing, the best way to handle COVID, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, is to maintain your own autoimmune system. Your immune system is God-given and it's given to fight off these things. I have, I am not an anti-vaxxer. I want to put that right out there. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. We have to do uh, sometimes, you know, I, I would like to see the vaccine split for the kids, you know, uh, you know, they get the measles, mumps, and rebel all together, but I am not an anti-vaxxer. So the bottom line is God bless your daughter because she obviously did everything right for you to maintain your immune system to fight this thing off. So but you're God recommending bless. he get a test to see if he uh, has, Right, yeah, okay. right. Get that, get that that antibody test brother okay okay God Anthony. bless you good luck with that thank thank, thank thanks you. for the call unfortunately we're out of time oh. R- real quick you mentioned with that call to anthony <laughs> and we've talked about this forever yeah maintaining your immune system is really critical isn't it, it is it is john i mean all the shots in the world all this that, and the other thing bottom line is this you need to keep your immune system up and i am telling you that hydration therapy the way we medically use it in our facility is one of the best ways you can do it and i've always felt as though i i I really, before they had the vaccine, I felt as though I was protected well, against and, and, and COVID. Again, and you know what I told you, let's not be cavalier, right. but of course it means following a certain type of protocol. And I will tell you, you can't, then you can't come in willy nilly, you know right. what I mean? Exactly. You got to follow a protocol and let us take good care of you both medically and functionally. And with that, we are going to put the wraps on another edition of Health Watch. Don't forget. If you missed any of today's show, we have our Health Watch replay this afternoon from 4 until 5. And also remember, we're here every Sunday, 8 till 9, the live version, here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. Operators are standing by right now. You want to call them? You, you've got plenty of time. They're there after 9 o'clock, 856 489 Remember, the website, InnovativeMedicalAssociates.com innovativemedicalassociates.com. For Dr. Molly Fantasia and everyone at Innovative Medical Associates, the lovely Linda, Barbara, Delightful D, Fabulous Fran, Joanne, and our nurses Jess and Crystal, and our medical assistant caring Kathy, I'm your host John DeMassey. Always a pleasure. Thank you for listening, and we'll do it all over again next Sunday, 8 till 9, the live version of Health Watch here on Talk Radio 1210 WPHT. You take care.